Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Lockdown Madhouse. I'm here at the, uh, the talk- Madhouse, the museum, with... Uh, you're talking about Victoria or Melbourne or, yeah, everywhere or is a man Docklands house. in particular? Every place is a manhouse at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, at this, um, this is Jim Bridges and we're at the um, Australian Cartoon Museum, mm. which I am the founder of. Mm. And um, I'm here with Franz Cantor, who forgets that he mentioned that he's a caricaturist every week. Um, well, yeah. I have a different take on caricatures. He does. I'm primarily, I like to think of myself as an illustrator because I think illustrators can tell stories. Yeah, he, today, is, he is an illustrator, that's for sure. Today we're looking at an artist who is a storyteller. So he's a great... Um, he's a, depending on who, who you talk to, he's sort of like a enfant terrible. Well, nine so, out of ten people you talk to would say he was a great artist. Yeah. Um, not all artists like him, but... Well, not all women like him. And there's... Um, Here he is. The, yeah, he's the plain one. The that's, uh, that's his jazz combo he was in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so he um, he's, he's a man of many many talents, but uh, we'll, we'll have a look at, at uh, and his. Uh, yeah, this is one of his stuff. talents there. This is um, arguably, in my mind, I find this after many years of looking at it and studying it, this is a cropped version of a painting called um, La Guernica, which uh, is about the Spanish Revolution. And anyway, it's, it's we'll probably the most famous painting of the last century. It is. It's quite important, Undeniable. actually. Um, this is a, a, a groundbreaking um, painting, which we'll talk about in a sec. This is a photograph which I thought we would use as the basis for a caricature, because it's kind of like he's got that that death stare, the Picasso he's death stare. He's got the stare. death stare, yes. So Pablo Picasso is the subject of our caricature. Picasso. Hmm. Very interesting man. Very. Um, this is the. Uh, that's one of his girlfriends. That's one of his girlfriends. No, this is called the crying woman. Weeping woman. Weeping woman. Sorry, and that was um, that was also historically important to us in Melbourne because I think it was the well, one did, that they that, stole. That, that was a series of paintings he did for Guernica, but um, what there's a whole series of weeping women paintings he did, and one of them got stolen. In Melbourne, yeah. um, and it was stolen in the 80s. by a group of people who um, Hated were protesting so. about the art establishment in Melbourne, mm. and they gave it back in brown paper. In brown paper. In a locker. In a locker. Yeah. In, at, Very, uh, at, at a railway station. Mm. Very interesting man. And they've never guy. found out who did it. No. I but they 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 think they know who did it, but they can't prove. It. Yeah. So, um, okay, the, this is a self-portrait of his. Very early. He's 25, I think. Very early. We'll, we'll, we'll look more at it. This is what they so-called blue period because he used a lot of um, um, uh, blue and uh, greens, which are um, on the colour wheel, they're, um, they're uh, uh, I was going to say anachronistic. No, they're um, um, not anthropomorphic. There's another word. They're complementary? No, complementary or opposite colours. So these are They're next are more, door to each other. <laughs> yeah, next door to each other colours. Oh. So this is a portrait of him by self portrait, fifteen years old. You can see it's very formal mm. in his approach. This is him at twenty five years old. So now he's influenced by African sculpture and about the lines and the the um, the simplicity of shape and the power of 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 simplicity. From uh, from African sculpture, and this is him at eighty nine years old. So you've got a, quite a difference of sixty years, sixty four years. Um, so you can start to see a lot of the um, influences from the African approach, the African sculptures, which are powerful to think about for um, a couple of reasons. One is because they have such a uh, a charged meaning of sexuality and fetish and religious connotations and things but also because um, their approach is definitely uh, an attempt to control um, reality uh, in that they simplify everything reduce everything down to its simple 
meanings. But they're also symbolic. interested in in in, uh, in in developing space in a painting. Mm. And the whole I'm not sh well, sculpture develops space by the yeah. fact that it, it contains it, you know, when you have yeah. like arms that join back onto the body, etc. Well, they, so were called the, look at they were called the cubist. But well, see, these guys were called the cubist. Yeah, but you see, yeah. when you go back to that picture, sorry, that picture, yeah, um, it's a caricature, in my opinion. Yeah, well, it's, it's a form of it's distortion it's a form of, it's and a form, exaggeration. It's a form of caricature. Yeah. yeah, distortion, simplification, exaggeration. And, and I would say that probably ninety percent of, of um, Picasso's portraits mm. were caricatures. Now, this is one of the most. This, if you were going to create a a space Noah's Ark and you wanted to save one painting, you only had one time. You only had time to save one painting from the human race. I would argue that you'd save this because after many years of looking at this painting it, it still floors me with the narrative in here and the narrative may not be completely understood because a lot of it is hidden so this eye for example which may look like a one of those um, hooded lamps in a room right why are they why are these forms these people and animals in a room um, it's it's about the Spanish Revolution it's about the bombing of a town yeah Guernica yeah um, and the, the, the torture of the, the inhabitants yeah they, they the um, the Nazis um, well the fascists well no the Nazis in in in, um, in Germany mm. gave these planes to um, Franco Franco to try out mm. Um, in his war, and they were just interested in in in, in their the, the Nazis were interested <coughs> in, in the damage they would do. Yeah. So he gave these planes, um, borrowed these planes, and they they bombed a village of just ordinary people. Yeah, civilians. Women yeah, and children, it was deliberately done. Animals. It was deliberately done. Yeah. So, the narrative in this painting is incredibly charged. It's very very powerful, and when you look at it, when you look into it. When you first look at it, you're kind of um, confused by a lot of the elements. But when you start to look into it, you read things very emotionally. It's, it's a pretty big painting, it's isn't it? Incredibly charged. Isn't it 15 feet long? Yeah. No, it's longer. It's a. It's a. It, it's housed in a museum now. Yeah, the Prado. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's got a huge. It's. It's a. It hangs on a huge wall. Yeah. So it's the size of a, a side of a building for sure. Very powerful painting. Anyway, if you have space on a if you have space on a Noah's Ark to save a painting this big, of course you would you would save that. So this is um, you believe in Noah's Ark, do you? <laughs> space one. So this is uh, uh, what is it called? The the damsels of Avignon. The les yeah. da, les dama, ladies, les ladies of the night in a, in a in a brothel, as my mother used to call so it, a, a brothel. A, 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 yeah. And the faces in particular. Which is shocking. This is not well. A, it was 1905 or 1907. Nobody could understand the premise. No one could yeah. understand. Well, you could understand the premise of uh, you know uh, nudes in a like a, a setting like this, right? But the way that they, that he described them, with the distortions and the references to African sculpture, was very very uh, confusing for and a lot shocking of people. at the time. Very shocking. Well, the people say they're shocked, but I, I don't think they're you know shocked. I think it's sort of like, you know, oh, we don't get it type of thing. <laughs> I don't think people get... Sh I can't imagine people getting shocked by art because it's such a... a, a oh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the history of art experience. is full of shock. What are you talking about? I don't think they get shocked. I think yeah, they get... I mean... Um, they get perturbed. Um, uh, this Hughes is a wrote a beautiful book called Shock of the New. Yeah. Oh, this, this is a beautiful... Richard Bardot. Yeah, B.B. meets Picasso. So Picasso meets a lot of celebrities was a, a favorite theme for magazines yeah. in the 50s, 60s um, era. This is him dancing. Um, they often, because he, he, he lived, he had like access to a beach, so he often had his swim, swimmers on, uh, you know, in his studio. Very complex, um, very complex man. He wasn't very nice to the women in his life. He was a bit of a brute. 
We'll talk more about him as we get into the caricature. Let's have a look at the caricature. So um, where are we working from? We'll go back to the piece that we're working from. It's got that sort of death stare. Let's have a look at yeah, that. Yeah, those black eyes. Hmm. Um, so what I've got to work with, I'm looking at uh, this sort of guitar shape for his face, his head, right? And obviously the hole, the sound hole is the... Is the the nose so it's kind of a um, a nice um, guitar shape or a, I don't know avocado so I'm thinking of a shape right a simple shape break it down into simple a simple attainable shape and then within that shape bring in the narrative bring in the the details and you know uh, so you're exaggerating simplifying and uh, laying in details within the new the new space that you've created. The lighting is uh, probably favoring the, the top left in this photograph, so you've got shadows that form on the bottom right, so it's something to remember when you're drawing. Also, the fact that the recognition comes from a relationship that you build between things like the mouth, the nose, and the eyes um, in this sort of mask configuration. This is where we need to concentrate a lot of the details. Right, so I've taken this thumbnail and I've um, drawn it up a little bit bigger and added, I've gone a little bit crazy and added a little bit more detail. But uh, I'm going to start to define this a little bit better. I think we'll get a deeper colour. So I'm using a brown pencil to, to create the form and then we're using a black pencil and a white pencil and black ink and white ink to try to build up some contrast. So we get more of a three-dimensional approach to the drawing. So um, what do you know about Picasso? Jim? Well, I was actually going to um, start the ball off. Instead of just talking about his life and mm. born and you know died and all the stuff he did. Um, well, no yeah, one's interested yeah. in when he died or <laughs> how he was well, born. Well, I mean, He's what, kind of what's, larger your than take, life. what's your take on, on his uh, portraits? On his portraits. Yes. I mean, I, I claim that they're caricatures. Why do you claim they're caricatures? Because, um, they, <laughs> because they are. Uh, 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 most... Just like that. Most art, most art is a form of caricature. Even landscapes and stuff, because they make the mountains bigger or, 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 or something is, you know, the, the ratios of, of reality are changed. You know, and it's not just people like um, El Greco or um, uh, 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 you know, people like that who, 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 who lengthened the face and the necks and all that sort of stuff. Um, before they had um, uh, perspective, a lot of art was caricatured in the sense that it, it's the, the, the ratios are different. You mean they couldn't draw? No, they don't no, know how to draw no, no, no. Perspective or something. Yeah, but I mean, even even with even with the rules of perspective, mm. um, I mean, Picasso could draw. He was a great draftsman, mm. but he chose not to be a realist, and he he went into the the semi abstract, mm. um, cubism. He's he's known well, for he's known for his cubism, but I mean, I've always felt, always when I'm looking at so-called high art as opposed to caricature. I've always thought that his works were caricature, mm. uh, especially the, the portraits. And um, when you get photos of the people he's drawing, mm. um, he's, he's not just you know like he's not just using their body in the context of, of, a, of a particular um, uh, movement or or action within a painting, which he has done, mm. and most artists do. But he. He stuck to trying to do a portrait of them, but he just had different ways. Like he'd have the nose going in a different direction and part of the face taken away and different eyes, uh, all that sort of stuff, all these techniques he did, but th they were a form of character. And there's, there's people like Robert, is it Risco? Hmm. The American. Um, Illustrator. There's yeah. a lot of, there's a whole tradition of that type of caricature. So, but people, I don't know, um, this thing about, High art is somewhere else, and caricature is somewhere else. To me, I just think Picasso was a caricaturist. I really do. I think he had a very strong. Even he, like he he drew Stravinsky, um, 
portrait of him, uh, not a painting, just a pencil drawing of him. And to me, it's, it's a caricature because he's made the hands and part of the face bigger than they normally are. Mm. So, uh, what's your take on it? Because you draw the bloody things. Um, I think it's about as relevant to discussing whether he's a portrait or it's a caricature I think it's about as relevant as people discussing you know the, the death of art um, they've done that since the 1930s every um, man and their dog get up in the newspaper and say you know oh this is the death of art art can't say anymore so the, the, the dialogue of art is, is irrelevant they're trying to I mean every time they come up with new tech they they try to explain it in a way that um, you know it's killed off this or it's yeah, killed off that. Yeah, that's that's true. But and they've that's often like, done that with that's art. like Plato saying you know it's a bad time to have children. Mm. You know, I mean it's always a bad time to have children in mm. one way or the other. Mm. Um, but I'm talking about um, people. Um, I mean, art is art, but um, at the same time, what is art? And, uh, I don't know. It, it, I mean, I, whether that people whether that, always... dialogue, whether, whether that dialogue matters right. or not, I just think that I just see such strong character within his work that I've always been attracted to it because I'm I'm primarily interested in caricature all my life, even as a child, hmm. um, and I've been really interested in Picasso and and primarily his portraits, not his well, not 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 his um, his cubist paintings, you know. Or his reworking of famous paintings, but mm. most of his portraits. Mm. And I see them, I've always seen them as caricature. Mm. But the point is, because of the way the art world is, they, you know, um, I don't think they... I mean, they, they probably think it's caricature, but they wouldn't call it caricature, you know. Um, I mean, the art world's a pretty strange sort of place. It's some of the biggest crooks in the history of the world have been in the art world. Yeah, and not all artists. Yeah, but most I'm, of them are writers and journalists and critics. Yeah, but like well, art gallery people. Or what, I mean, the point is, uh, you know, it, it's also a business, and it's and to keep the prices high, mm. they indulge in stuff. And, and one of the things you don't call you don't call Picasso a caricature because if you call his stuff caricature, it, it'll affect the, the price of his yeah. work. Yeah, well, that's the problem with uh, art as a commodity, as a as a, a product, you know. Um, to me, it's always been a process. So it's the process itself, irrespective of what you want to call it, whether you call it art or not. It doesn't really matter in the end. What's what's it telling you? What's the story? That's the most important thing. Yeah. It's a visual narrative. Yeah. So anything other than that is 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 you know it, it's a distraction. I mean, that, the problem with Robert Hughes is that a lot of people, a lot of art critics have. The, the, uh, they have an ability to describe things but not feel things. So they don't feel anything. The things that they're describing, they don't actually experience. So when they talk about art, they don't experience art from, from a first-hand point of view. They experience it from an academic point of view. Well, there's not, too many, very there's, there's not too many art, hard to artists take. who are actually art critics, are they? No. Yeah, they... But I think the, the, the idea of an art critic... Is kind of a, a you know a self-defeating um, argument because um, it's like saying you're an air critic. You're an air critic. You're you're critical of air. So you're making a uh, like a a, a a discourse on the subject of air, right? Or the subject of water, or the subject of fire, or the subject of earth. You're creating a dialogue where we didn't realize we needed a dialogue. So art is in itself is doesn't need further explanation, in my point of view. That's what's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, I've, so the point I've, of, I've attempted to, in my life, I've attempted to write. It's like a, trying to analyze. I've air. attempted to write about films. I've attempted to write yeah, about. But films. Hang on, about art. Mm. I've attempted to write about a lot of things, but when it comes to writing about music, I'm stumped, and it's not. And it's not just because I don't know music technically. It's just that. I, I just feel it's a waste of time to, to write but about But don't you music. think that it's trying to define something that in itself doesn't need further description or further definition? Well, personally, I, Why must you personally, I, personally, I agree with you. I mean, I've grown to understand that. But I'm just saying that in, in the history of art documentaries, mm. 
and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them, they all try, they all try and never succeed in trying to give you the secret of creativity and they never ever achieve it. You know, there's a, a concept of uh, like a lot of creationists to try to define God or, or religion or, you know, life or something, existence. They try to define existence scientifically with this sort of pseudoscience, a faux science. And um, the problem with that is that they don't realize that they're, they're actually killing the concept. You're actually killing God by defining God or you're killing religion by defining religion. And it's the same thing. Once you start to define something that is special, like art, which is much more special than, than God or religion, <laughs> then you know, you're actually killing the process. You're, do, you're limiting the process itself. I think art um, has occasionally gone up um, a lot of um, dead ends. But, but it's art, much more important art won't die. Art, than art, religion. Art can't die. No. Because people, it's, it's gone up children a couple of pick dead up ends. crayons and they draw. Yeah. They make stories. Yeah. Where's that you wall? You can't stop them. Where's that wall? Where's that family album photos? So I think... Where's the texter? Let's get into it. I think that, you know, the, the dialogue should stop about art. Just make art. Mm. Don't write anymore. Pick up a bloody pencil. Instead of writing a discourse on art, on the death of art, pick up a pencil and draw. Well, I discovered... To answer your question, way back then, um, I discovered Picasso as a teenager. Mm. And um, although he was uh, in his last, you know, during the 70s, sorry, the, the late 60s, he was, um, he was a very old man at that stage. But I discovered him, his early works and the middle works and mm. all that stuff. Um, and, and I saw him as a, to me, he was a symbol of... Um, um, New blood, Picasso. So, yeah, he he was a symbol of new blood, and um, I had arguments with my father mm. about all sorts of things. Uh, you know, um, well, what's new blood? Because, no, new well, way of no, looking at yes, things. Yes, yes, new ideas. You know, mm. and of course well, the older generation get caught up in their in their the way they do things, mm. and you know they um they don't like change, and my father wasn't <laughs> that so interested silly. in art, but I sort of got him interested. In art, because I use Picasso as an example of the new coming through, you know. Mm. So I, Picasso to me became like a, a, a symbol of change, okay. although it wasn't that relevant because most of the work I was talking about was done in the 30s, and I'm talking yeah. about the late 60s. Um, and That's then, interesting, but I've never thought of it like that. I don't think of it in terms of uh, the new or the old. And I, I just think of and, it as, and I had as friends, ideas. I had friends who were artists. And a lot of people are really influenced by Picasso, mm. um, but there are a lot of oh, people. Oh, for sure, there he's lot, changed there, art. Yeah, but there are a lot of people who don't like him. They just think, oh, well, he was all right for Cubism, but everything else he did was crap, you know. Mm. Um, and you'd have these sort of arguments, you well, know. Well, he's not a nice people. person, but you know. So to me, Picasso became very important. Um, mm. Became very important. So I, I was doing some graffiti. <laughs> um, in, in the '60s, and I'd write things like "Help support Picasso," as if he needed support. Like he'd probably charge ten ten thousand um, francs for a, a, a signature on a piece of paper. Mm. He was doing stuff like that, you know. And he was the most um, uh, he was the richest artist of all time, wasn't he? Mm. Well, isn't that? I I don't know. Yeah, I think he was the richest artist of all time. <gasps> okay. Um, I don't know whether that's an important thing. No, 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 but it, well, it is to a lot is of it? people. It is to starving artists. <laughs> no, but but people are impressed with money, aren't they? You know. Anyway, the point is, um, so I got into all sorts of trouble. Um, I was dragged up before the headmaster because a young girl saw me writing "Help Support Picasso" on the wall. In very small, I was. Did I you did, do it in the school? Yeah. Oh, there you with go. a text of colour on the wall, and uh, I was dragged up before the headmaster, and. Um, uh, I thought I was going to get into trouble, and he ended up sitting down and talking about Picasso for about 25 minutes during lunchtime, mm. which was interesting. And he talked about how Picasso affected him as a young man, and of course he was in his he was in his uh, 60s, and mm. I was in I, I was I wasn't even in the 20s then; I was a teenager. Mm. So that was interesting because he was the first adult um, I'd come across who talked about Picasso in a, in a in a wonderful way. Mm. 
Well, that's the thing. He's sort of uh, become. But in the media, Picasso became the, the artist. There was mm. nobody. Everybody had to sort of was in the shadow of last century. Um, everybody was in the shadow of Picasso the whole century. He he dominated the century. Uh, the, the you know um, so. Well, he's the opposite of the starving artist. He's a su- you know if you have but, a picture of an artist and most people say. Oh, you're an artist. Oh, like Van Gogh. You should say, no, not like Van Gogh. I'm not suffering. I don't have a mental illness by being an artist. I'm more like Picasso. So you just take take, take me or leave me. That's it. Yeah. He has a persona. And, um, you know, he's definitely, you can see from this face, he's like the enfant terrible. So he's a very um, spoilt uh, child syndrome here happening right across his face very um he's arrogant he knows his power he knows his sexuality he knows his intellect he knows his opinions so you know he does not um take criticism lightly he also he knew of, he, he also, wouldn't come into his realm he also knew that matisse was a better artist than him mm. but he, he, he'd never admit it <laughs> uh, yeah well you know, it's it's you could say you could say anything you want to with regarding artists. You know, they're this, they're that. But at the end of the day, it's what you get personally out of the messages, out of these yeah. these drawings. They're they're incredibly powerful. I mean, I can understand why um, um, the the uh, he he's regarded as an asshole because of his uh, his his attitude to women and mm. the way he treated them mm. and the way he depicted them. Mm. And there's lot, lots of rape scenes in his paintings and stuff. Mm. But um, the bigger picture is he's an artist, and um, uh, mm. they, you know, um, other other artists have shown um, rape scenes, but they haven't been um, told off by. Um, uh, they haven't become political. Um, um, they were told off. Not in their time, no. Delacroix and uh, yeah, they were told off at the time. They were definitely told off at the time. No, they weren't. Yeah, they were. There was a lot of... It's um, a pretty... I mean, you know, it's only recently that the feminism has right. actually um, come to the fore. No, but, Strongly enough to... I mean... Yeah, but no, it's not a picture... It's not a pleasant thing. It's a lot of violence and stuff, and people take umbrage to depicting that. But depends on how you... It's part, Look, it's part of a narrative. It's part of the story that you're trying to tell. So whether you push against the, the social norms of, of the time or not, it's, it's really up to you. If you feel it in your heart that, you know, that's what you must do, then you must do that. So art is like a, it's a way of um, coming to terms with things that sometimes are unpleasant um, in ways that, that um, other forms of art like music or, you know, poetry or whatever, that doesn't really cater for. There's a lot of stuff here, a lot of things in art, in, in, in painting, that you can't really get in, in photography or film or anything else. It's, it's very, very um, Well, that's a, gi- that's a given. That's a given. Yeah. But, um, well, well, I mean... Um, well, the effect of film probably is, is powerful. I would say that's probably the, the next... Um... Well, no, I, I would, I'd say that um, more people have been influenced by film than, than art. Mm. Um, yeah, because it's more prevalent than art. Well, it's sort of bigger, isn't it? The, scale, the scale is bigger. But it's interesting that how that they're never uh, affected by photography so much. You know, film, yes. Photography, not so much. No. No. Because art sort of occupies a longer time than a photograph. It comes from a, 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 like a, a long session. Like this is a drawing session. So there's a lot of that deconstruction going well, I mean, on in your just brain. Most you of the people drawing. looking at this are, are w- watching a, a computer screen, right? Mm. Um, I'm standing next to you and I know that it's a different experience looking at what you're drawing than what I see on, on the copy or, or whatever, you know? Um, or, or, or well, even, it's a process. E- even the live thing, uh, the, the the live um, Facebook uh, thing, mm. um, it's a different thing. Um, art is as uh, like there's not much filter in between. I mean, if you're standing in front of the original, 
um, you, you don't have printing problems. You don't. You have. You have the scale. Um, you know, sometimes you, when you see a painting that you're really familiar with for the first time mm. in in the flesh, it's it's shocking because it's so much bigger or it's so much smaller mm. or the colours are so. But different. you know what? There's a process involved, and a lot of people are. I've done this with other artists. I've gone to exhibitions. I went to a Klimt exhibition with uh, uh, a fellow artist who loved Klimt, yeah. right? Phil Barlow. Yeah. And we went right up close to the paintings yeah. and we're talking about the, the painting, the story, everything about it, the story, the narrative, the, yeah. the artwork, the technique, the process, everything. And the amount of gold people that actually used. had these earphones to take the, yeah. the you know, the... the yeah, to go through the, the crap that yeah. they listen to from art. But they trips. took them off and followed you. I bet they you. followed that's us story. around. Yeah. Well, that's happened to me too. I've, I've and, been. And the guards had to stop them. Yeah. Because it's they're you know losing an audience. Well, it's all controlled, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's all crowd control, you know. Um, but you know, they were starting to. We it, were we were decrypting. We were decrypting the painting. Yes. So it's almost like going back in time, saying first you do this, then you do this, then you do this, yeah. and then the people that were watching suddenly became aware of that, and yeah, then they could see it unravel in time. So the paintings, not you can't do this with photographs. Photographs are a, a depiction of an instant. Yeah. A painting or a drawing like this happens over time. Yeah. So it's it's both the drawing of the subject and the drawing of the creator, of the artist. That's why it's something weird about it, something very potent and special. Well, Picasso started a lot of dialogue, probably more dialogue about art than any other artist who ever lived. Mm. And um, the last century was just full of that dialogue, just full of it. Well, most um, people would would probably say yeah. that, you know, that it's too simplistic and too, you know, that their kid can draw that or something like that. Oh, that's just one of the things, and, yeah. You know, why is he so rich? But, but I mean... Doesn't um, deserve it. You know, what, what about his found um, objects like that mm. that bicycle seat and the handlebars? I mean, it's a bull. That's and, not him. Yeah, it is. And also where, where he used a Volkswagen as the head of a baboon sculpture. Mm. It's a Volkswagen car. It's a, 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 a toy... Um, well, you know, there is a, a sense... The thing about Picasso that I admire more than anything else is the sense of play that goes through his brain when he tries to tell the story with, with a painting. Well, so, I mean, he, he wouldn't spend two... I mean, a painting like Guernica, there were a lot of... It took him, took him a while because before he actually even started on the big mm, canvas, mm. he did a lot of um, studies. Yeah. And... Um, and uh, he, you know, he absorbed a lot of influences, mm. and then he started on that painting. Um, you know, m most of his career, he just sat down and did about six, seven, eight paintings a day, and they were mostly ideas. Mm. They're mostly sketches with paint. Mm. They're sketches, and they're just ideas. He's trying out ideas. He's trying out a new way of doing an ear, or a new way of flopping the the nose over, or yeah. whatever. You know, they were just and. Um, when you, when you, I mean, he might have. When you see just a few of these pieces, you think, well, that's unique. But I mean, when you see a lot of his work, it's pretty boring, you know, mm. and uh, unfinished looking, you know. Mm. But, but like a lot of people, um, what fascinates me about Picasso, um, not so much his finished product, but what he he tried to reevaluate the whole history of art. So he went, the the last. I'd say third of his life, he started to repaint famous paintings that affected him, mm. and he re repainted them in a different sort of way. And I was interested in how people do that. Um, art, you know, um, film directors do that. Some film directors do that. Mm. Writers do that. Poets do that. They go back and they rewrite. Uh, not Michael Bay. Not who? Michael Bay. Who's he? Director. No, well, I'm saying that, you know, and, and so that interests me that he went back through the whole history of art and re redid it to a certain extent, you know. Mm. 
but I mean, he was he was fascinated with primitive things as well. I mean, besides, what's well, it? It's created. It's he a was thing, inter- a he was interested object. in cave art besides yeah. African masks. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's not a cultural thing. It's yeah. it's a it's a way of human beings depicting other human beings. Yeah. In whatever fashion that you know or reason, it's a different way of thinking, a different way of looking, a different way of explaining. Yeah. So it's a visual narrative, but it's done in a different voice. Well, Picasso has also a lot of... He, he's a hero... Like, the, 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 there's two main heroes in art mm. um, these days, and one's Picasso and one's Van Gogh. Mm. And, and one, one is the, the sensitive, uh, crazy man. Yeah. And the other one is this... Um, well, they're both passionate, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yes. So the and passion is very... Yes. Integral Passions, part of yes. their makeup and their passion is so important in everything that you do. If you if you try and hide your passion, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Mm. Because I think passion is is the liberating force to your creativity. Mm. If you allow your passion to come out, your creativity is is not is not hindered. Yeah. So let's all be passion provocateurs. Trying to. <laughs> I've heard that phrase somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's connected to a red coat, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So um, Picasso, to me, uh, as a young man, was 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 a, a symbol of um, of new ideas. Um, you know, I mean, although he, you know, he, um, chronologically, he was sort of old hat by the time I came along. Mm. Um, you know. Um, and it's e- it's easy to overlook art. It's easy to overlook something you know in favour of something you like. Like you know, growing up, I at first I wasn't uh, quite aware of Picasso, but then you know, um, the more I started to look into his um, his works, um, the strength of the narrative started to. Um, sink in oh yeah the passion yeah you know so it's e- it's very easy to say you know oh your kid can draw like that or something but the fact is look at that face look at the intensity there it tells you a lot about his art so how, how, how did Picasso affect your life and, and at what age okay so um, there's this notion when you're learning to draw that you must draw everything like a photograph, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people regard photographs as the better drawings. So the closer you are to a photograph, the better. That's how a lot of people kind of... When you first look at it, you sort of think, you know, maybe that's the answer. But that's not the answer. And the reason is Picasso. Because Picasso made much more powerful art by not being literal to the subject not being a slave to reality so when they invented a camera 150 years ago cameras were um novelties very expensive handmade novelties that nobody wanted well they could afford Mm. but artists could afford them because artists have always been middle class so they could afford them but artists were interested because they're a mechanism for recording and any any device that came along in in history about artists recording are, a visual recording artists would get hold of yeah but artists are uh, early adopters of technology yeah because of their curiosity yeah. and the fact that they can see something abstract in its use well, so a, they can actually of, see a, a further use for the device a lot of artists did all their landscapes and their, their paintings of storms and stuff inside of buildings I mean, it was only 150 years ago that artists were actually going out. And, I mean, people sketch things, yeah, but they weren't taking paint out um, un- until In 120 air, yeah. years ago. Mm. So that because know, they didn't have nice weather. Well, it's to do with technology again. It's to do with paint and paint and flies in the paint. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, um, it's. Um, they didn't put more teen in the paint at that time. They had, you <laughs> more teen? Yeah. Oh, hey, you flies, but, please go away. <laughs> but I think if you were to examine uh, 
you know, a, a Da Vinci under the microscope, you might find some dead ants. <laughs> It's like the... Um, I can imagine Van Gogh painting sunflowers and a bee comes along and he belts it one. He, he, he kills it, just squashes it on the canvas because get off, you know, I'm painting here, you know. Yeah. I'm sure that's probably there. Um, they'll, 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 they'll find a, a, a bee stung stuck in the, um, in the paint, a, a bee, bee sting. Yeah. I've never asked a, a historian, art historian or restorer about that, but I'm sure they find weird things. They definitely find hairs yeah. in the paint, you know, because eyelashes are, are probably the most common form, or hand hairs from the hand, something that, you know, breaks off, rubs off, or, or uh, something. But I think occasionally they find some so they can very get, disturbing they can get, hairs. They don't get DNA from Da Vinci. <laughs> from Da Vinci's pubic hairs stuck in the varnish, yeah. I don't know. It's taken an unpleasant turn. This. Um, I think. Uh, I mean, you you can talk about this bloke in well, so you know, many ways. Um, it doesn't what's matter. What's his name? Um, you know what's his name? Oh, I'll never forget him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Blue poles. Oh, Jack. Jack baby. Yeah. The son of Jack. Um, yeah, Pollock. Pollock. Jackson yeah. Pollock. Yeah. So. Jackson Pollock or used called, to paint... He's called Jack the Dripper. <laughs> yeah, well, he, well, it's not just as simple as that. It's no. Those devices that he used to create them were very ingenious. Anyway, so to save... Um, to, to, to move on a little bit in, in uh, talking about um, Jackson Pollock, I was going to say that in his paintings, he often... He, he painted them on the ground which I think, incidentally, might be a better way of looking at them because they're kind of... He's very, he was very influenced by American Indian sand painting. Yeah. And the sand painters, the American Indians, used to go take peyote and go through these sort of um, journeys. Yeah. And their journey would be expressed by the coloured sand that they would rhythmically create these... Um, Oh, it's the same with Aboriginal Abstracts. art. I mean, there's yeah. a there's a, a gallery in Sydney near the um, the Opera House um, that there's this very large painting that's on the ground, mm. and um, you have to go upstairs to view it. Yeah, because it's so big on the ground, you can't actually look at it properly. You yeah, know? well, same thing with blue poles. You should yeah. actually watch blue poles on the ground, not on the wall. It's not a it's not a natural thing to to see it on the wall. Created on the well, ground. that's that's a bit. I mean, you know, um, what's his name? A um, um, friend of mine does um, large canvases, mm. and he puts them on the wall to um, step back to look at. Yeah, but he paints them, and of course, he's elderly now, and he's getting a sore back because he has to lean over to do all the work. Mm. Um, and then um, there's people like. Um, uh, Jim Carrey of all people he, mm. he's taken up painting mm. and he has this the device where he paints uh, horizontally mm. and he has this device that runs him backwards and forwards it's like he, he leans through a, like a ladder and paints yeah. like lying on a ladder situation like well on, that's like um, Michelangelo no, with, that's the with, opposite. A, with a 20 foot brush no Michelangelo lay on his back yeah, and he got, have a talk about Michelangelo one day because that is a horrible job. Yeah, he, he lay did. on his back. My and gosh, that was, was a, a nightmare. Got to, a sore neck, you know. That would have been a nightmare to paint. Hey, Michelangelo, when are you going to be finished? Yeah. Oh, when I finish my Columbo. Yeah. So, um... Uh, so, what do these jowls mean? What are these... Big jowls he has, very large jowls. Um, well, he's very opinionated, very uh, sure of himself. This is like the, the true meaning of the inf the terrible infant, the spoilt brat grown up. This guy is like, you know, picture child, the um, the illustration for that, that topic. Um, incredible, powerful mind. Mm. And his will is like really um well the rest of the world carried on like he was the greatest artist of all time and of course he 
he um, he capitalized on that, didn't he? Yeah, it's very powerful will. So there's like this incredible um, f- fight, a battle, terrible battle going on in his head between logic and imagination, and mm. you know the um, the creative and the and the the, do- the domination of nature. Both the in um, his early work, he showed a lot of um, tenderness mm. to women and to children and and yeah. colour. Mm. But as he got older, he was just he was just interested in um, what he saw and, and how he could um, process it for his personal filters. Mm. Yeah, well, it's something that um, you know you you can't. You, it's seldom seen in other work. In other artists, that sort of ded- that passion and dedication. Um, also, the you know, um, there's a certain amount of cruelty and a certain amount of um, selfishness. And well, I mean, he he, he, is... he he didn't um, when when the Nazis were in Paris and France, mm. he didn't um, he didn't run away like all the other artists that sort of stayed there. Mm. And because of his reputation, mm. I mean, Hitler hated. Um, modern art mm. but his reputation was so strong that they left him alone to a certain extent didn't they yeah I mean everybody else was um, pushed around and, and um, bullied and all that sort of stuff and mm. scared to death but not him they, they left him it's almost like well Picasso's a separate case put him over there bang you know yeah He's a, he's a very he's a very um, potent. Um, he's become like a symbol. Yeah, well, I mean, um, those those drawings he did where he didn't take the pen off the off the page, just just a continuous line. They're just delightful. They're just when you look at those things, they're just you know they're they're nudes and yeah, they're just. The eye just keeps well, going a, on in this, and it's, you know, the eye just goes round and round these pictures, and it just so. Well, we yeah. use that today to teach drawing. That's a that's a method of teaching drawing. Yeah. Blind contour drawing. I mean, he tried everything. He tried etchings. He tried. Um, I mean, he's famous for certain things, like when you try everything and it doesn't work, piss on it. He said stuff like that, and he was primarily talking about um, um, pottery because he worked in pottery on stage and, mm. and glazes and all that sort of stuff that, you know yeah so he's more he's he, I think he's, he's most playful with his, with his found well. objects he's very playful with his found objects you know yeah. putting things together well it's finding meaning out yeah. of chaos yeah so everything to him was a sense of play that's more than anything else I think that is his um his power, it's the power of, you know, of looking beyond the, um, the, the normal and into the, into the abnormal. Well, that's what I used to say to my father. Like, my father was a bike builder. And one of the things that we argued about was that, that, um, that bike seat with, with the handlebars on top of it, which makes it into a bull. And he was really cheesed off about that because he just... You know, I mean, all the experience he had of building bikes and of riding bikes. He was an amateur bike rider. He just didn't want to see that. He just didn't, you know. Why? Well, well he just didn't say... I mean, I just said... It, it insulted his bikes? Or? <laughs> well, I don't know. You, 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 you have a built-up physical relationship with objects. Right. Then someone comes along and does something like that. I suppose it would, um, you know. But it's just that I, I, li- I liked his playfulness. That's mm. one of the things I liked about him. But, you know, uh, art's supposed to be serious. Yeah, no, it's the opposite. It's supposed to be serious, you know. Oh, to most I mean, people, kids' I art know. is playful, but, you know, that's, you know, he's, a, he's an adult and, you know. Yeah, but we kind of uh, forget that art should be playful. That's yeah. the, the reason why it, it's important to us, you know. And, uh, and not just for the few, but for everybody, because we're all experience it as kids we have a sense of it of our imagination and you know experimentation and all of this is part of growing up it's a shame that when we grow up we forget about uh, how 
special that experience of drawing is? Well, I, I think that's the... Um, um, I mean, you hear stories about artists who keep on doing the same sort of thing over and over and over and over, and they, they're strip-mining the idea, and then they they stop, and they're blocked, and then they go off in another direction, and all this sort of stuff. I think that Picasso, he, the fact that he, he tried all these... He, he painted on glass, he, he did those air drawings with, with a torch, mm. all these different things he tried... Um, I think all these different techniques that you try and explore, it's about exploration, isn't it? And having fun. Yeah, but kids, it's about exploration but and kids having fun. do that without any effort. I know, because that's how you learn. Adults have to, have to unlearn yes. all the rubbish that they've been taught yeah. by teachers and society yeah. growing up and religion. All the crap that, that they have, all the lies that they're fed, they have to unlearn it and find their sense of innocence and playfulness in order to yeah. express themselves. He was also you know. probably the most prolific artist of all time, which is another thing, you know, he just kept churning them out, you know. Mm. Long, long life, always drawing, constantly, you know. Yeah. And, of course, anything with the... I mean, I remember there were ridiculous things. Um, about 40 years ago, someone bought a... Um, a Picasso and a Picasso, shredded it up. And no, uh, yeah, a Picasso sold it in bits. print, and it was one of three hundred or something. Mm. He cut it up into into square <laughs> inches, yeah. and raffled them off. And you know, um, you you too can have an original Picasso. You a know, piece of one, yeah, yeah, piece of an original Picasso. And people bought them; they were all s- subscribed, like within a week or something. You know, mm. and what's that all about? That's all about money, commodification yeah. of art. But as soon as, soon as you put dollar values on, on, on the paintings, mm. um, people start thinking about paint, uh, art very differently. They just do. And how many people have you come across in art galleries who are just standing in front of a picture and <laughs> they look like beach whales. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. They, they, they're standing there, you know. Well, they're, at, they're actually having a dialogue in their head between the child... In there, in well, their, that's in probably right. That's, that's, I think so. It's, a, it's almost like a left brain, right brain yeah. aneurysm. It's like some form of conniption. Well, you're going to have fun if you give him a white, ba- white background, aren't you? Mm. You're going to have a bit of fun there, mate. So out of all the artists and illustrators that I've uh, followed and looked at and studied over the years, this man is probably the most enigmatic, the most puzzling. Um, you know, there's a lot of things about Picasso that's it's scary and exhilarating at the same time. Pablo Picasso, mystery man. Yeah, man of mystery. So... You know, the more I discover about him, the more there is yet to discover. There's the more mystery that you un- that you think you solve or you uncover, the more mystery presents itself. So he's a very, um, very strange person, and I think for that, you know, it kind of gives us permission as humans to be also strange. Because when you see somebody crying out in the storm, uh, you know, like he does, then you kind of think, oh, maybe, maybe that's a thing. Maybe you'll feel better if you tackle the world and the impossible and the nightmare, you know, with paint kind of inspires you to do the same thing so I think that is that's a fun concept um, I need a little bit of a error okay I remember I remember uh, there were no Picassos in Australia when I was a kid right um, in, in, in galleries there might have been a couple um, private out of choice 
No, they, well, I don't, don't think they could afford him. Mm. Or they, I don't know. M- 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 maybe they didn't like him. Maybe the Australians are very conservative. We are cut off from the rest of the world in lots of ways, you mm. know. And um, um, you know, but but then um, I think the Queensland Gallery bought a uh, the Dutch. There's a, a nude with a woman with a Dutch head, uh, a, a woman um, mm. a headdress on, traditional headdress on. And, you know, I'm looking at this picture and I'm thinking, well, that doesn't look much of a Picasso to me because Picasso represented, you know, I mean, that's the point. The name represents his, you know, his name yeah. represents so much. Yeah. But you can't have an art discussion without Picasso. You no. Know? I mean, you could start with... You know, somebody, I don't know, well, someone totally like. Well, he dominated. Klimt, he, he Oskar t- Kokoschka. Yeah, well, Kandinsky, so many people, you know. You know, Mondrian. Piet. Clay. Yeah, Heinrich. Heinrich. Yeah. Heinrich Clay is a, is a, is a illustrator. So um, we, we had in my one primary of the greatest, school. Yeah, he is. One of the greatest draftsmen of all time. Mm. So in my primary school, we had a lot of paintings and my teachers would often talk about endlessly about the paintings on the wall, you know, like this person, that person. And I remember there was a blue period uh, of Picasso. Yeah. And that was the one that was talked about incessantly. Every te- the maths teacher, every teacher. Even the maths teachers. Yeah. Well, the religious a... teacher, whatever. They would all talk about this painting. Everyone had something to say about Picasso. So Picasso was like the key of understanding art in a way. If you could appreciate art, if you could appreciate Picasso, Picasso was the key to art, to well, understanding that's, that's, and loving that's, art. that's what they taught him. I mean, yeah. um, you know, like uh, he had very simple, a very simple painting, mm. very simple forms and lines. Mm. Um, so, you know, even you can be an artist, you know, that sort of stuff, as opposed to, like, if if you're looking at a... Um... Well, there's there's that thing I was telling you about with, you know, um, Klimt. So looking artists looking at, and, at other artists' work and sort of unravelling the, 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 the time or the, um, the process has a certain transparency about the, about the artwork in how it's created... And that's uh, just as valuable as the message, as the story itself about the painting. So there's two stories in art. There's a story about what the subject is and there's a story about... How it's done. How it's done and Mm. who did it. Um, And that's the thing that's interesting. Do you want to discuss the... um, What? The um, The white pencil. geology of those lines? Well, I I did a little bit. There's, There's this incredible... I've exaggerated them here. I've made them deeper. But I've just sort of exaggerated the conflict that's going on. Why do some people have head. these lines and others don't? Okay, so it's a combination. They show up because of the sun, right? Uh, you know, drying out the skin, etc. And, and time, drying out the skin. But they're drying out because they're, had, they're drying out in these patterns, they form these these furrows and wrinkles and things because of expressions. Expressions are created by thoughts and emotions that play on the face. So it's the same thing as erosion. Say the great, you know, the 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 um, what's the biggest Grand, Grand Canyon. Canyon? Yeah, see Grand Canyon. It's the you know the the most important um, thing in America. <laughs> landform in the world probably um, because it's so visible. And it was in the Flintstones, but um, it's so visible and evident of the power of erosion, and it's the same thing with the face. So all of these wrinkles and, okay, and so furrows what and was he are thinking, created by thoughts. What was Picasso thinking and, to get that? And emotions. What, what well, was he thinking to get that? Th- there's this, there's a battle between you know um, the outside world and the inside world, and um, it's like a battle of good and evil. There's like a huge, uh, a huge battle going on between logic and illogic. The right brain, the left brain. You know the um, 
Well, I would say that the, I would say that the playful side of Picasso won. Mm. The exploration or continually trying to find something different, you know. Well, I th- it's yeah. Well, it's 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 reflected in his eyes. It's kind of uh, evident that you know he he has the ability to um, dominate his world. He's completely in in full control of his world, and you know, um, depending on who you talk to, I guess it's either a good thing or a bad thing. But you know, ultimately, there's no other way other than the way of Picasso. Um, certainly in his point of view, in his world, in his world view, it's very, um, what I've lost here, something, there's so many lines here I'm getting lost, so it's like a, you know, I'm taking wrong turns here and there, some detours, very interesting, I might even forget to put in some. Have you ever drawn Picasso before? I have, but not to this d- detail, okay. there's a lot of. I've drawn him, but I haven't shaded him like this. Yeah. It's a totally different experience, this... Um... I think I might stop soon. I'm, I'm getting a bit tired of... Uh, <laughs> the, the, you know, it's like walking up... It's like walking in the Grand Canyon, up and down, up hills and down valleys, and following along the creek and becomes the river and then you know it's quite exhausting so I might actually have to stop soon uh, let's go with a brush pen Tr- create a uh, sense of intensity Well, I, I think you've spent more time doing um, w- working on a Picasso self portrait, a portrait than Picasso ever did on on, on any of his self portraits. Mm. No, I think he, the, when but, he was fifteen, I thought that was a very. Um, I think he, apparently yeah, he's pretty, he's a fast worker. Oh, was he? Oh, yeah. So look at this stuff here. This fine, you know, these lines here that sort of. Spider webs that go off from his eyes. They're acting like this draw these arrows, these roads, little all the roads all roads lead to Rome. So all roads lead to his eyes. And his eyes are the most intense, um, somewhat cold in a way, because they're dead. incredibly dead, yeah. Well they're not like a shark dead, they're they're really intense. Yeah, very yeah, but still black. Mm. So, you know, there's obviously a there's a nightmare happening right in, in front of your face with Picasso. And it's like Lagernica, it's like the effects of Lagernica. What what other um paintings of of or series of paintings do you like of his stuff? Of his stuff? Yeah. I like the musicians because I, I like the the effect that the musicians have had on animation, yeah, uh, on jazz. Yeah, it, it did have an effect. Yeah, very powerful. Because again, it gives animators and illustrators and designers yeah. a reason not to be photographic. Because remember, the camera replaced a lot of that need to be photographically yeah. real for artists and illustrators and cartoonists. So um, this again gave people a new perspective on you know what could be done and what's important and what's not important. Basically, it frees you up from the slavery of having to put in all the detail of, of realism, you know. So you don't have to be a photograph. Um, you don't have to paint or draw, draw photographically to be good. It's a it's a um, somewhat cathartic experience to realize that um, beauty is not in the um, eye of the beholder beauty is in the eye of the a professional creator. artist like yourself is aware of time and 
Somewhat. Yeah, and you have to work. Not at the moment. Well, no, but um, the fact that you've, you, I mean, um, while they're doing a particular thing, like for instance, the little tiny hairs of Picasso, they're aware of how they're going to have to finish it off. So they, at that stage, they sort of cut this back, whereas you just keep pushing on, um, thinking, oh, I'll solve that problem when I get there. Is that a good, um, is, is that a, I'd, I'd say that's healthy, isn't it? Because you, you can't, you can't foresee problems before they No, but they if you're occur. a professional, if you're a professional, because you've got to get, a, it's got to look a certain way for a certain publication, a certain standard, and within a certain time, as opposed to just taking your time like you are now, right? Well, I'm, I'm also, yeah, but I'm... If, if this was going in the... In the I would still if take the, me a bit the same you, amount of time. If you're at the Sydney Morning Herald and you had yeah. to get this out soon and... and oh, I would tackle it differently. You, you, what, you wouldn't do the stray hairs? I would, but I probably wouldn't like to cut them in. I'd, I'd be taking some shortcuts here and there yeah. that try to help with the time factor. You know, yeah. there's a lot of... Um, but it's changed it too because go. there's just so far you can go into the hair with mm. the black and therefore it gives it a further um, uh, thickness of the hair whereas before they were just coming out of the... seemingly they are coming out of the skull looks really strong. Yeah. And now it's got a um, bit of a turf up there more, more than before because of the black. We mean a turf? A turf. Turf. Yeah, they're a bit chunkier. Yeah. Well, it's your fault. It's like you said, well, how are you going to do the white in the background if you've got white hair? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just, you, you, make a, you make decisions sometimes based on um, what you think at the time. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. I remember looking at her. Um, I'm not afraid to make mistakes. No, I, I think I, I think that's one of the most valuable things that's come out of these drawings. Um, don't be afraid to but make mistakes. Yeah, look, it doesn't look like him. So, yeah, well, it's, so what? It's not, <laughs> well, I mean, most people. Would, me a river. M most people would throw the picture out. Or, nah. No, but I'm saying that the thing is, um, y you've learned something in the process. Yeah, you've had fun. Yeah. I'm enjoying him. I'm enjoying Pablo's face. I'm and there, there, are, certain, there are certain people, and there are certain and people paint. who just can't be got. Mm. And all artists will tell you that. They'll say, oh, there's something about this guy. Depend. you, you know, you, no, that's not true. You get them, but you get them in a way that is a different part of a story, a different yes. part of the, narr the yeah, visual but, narrative. Yes, but it's not everybody's idea yeah. of who that person is. No. Yeah. Um, so you may need to revisit, you know, the, the face again. Yeah. So, you know, I've never been able to successfully draw um, Nicole Kidman. So I might like to draw oh, Nicole freckles Kidman. Are, fre freckles are hard to draw. It's not the freckles, it's something else. She had them surgically removed, so it made it easier for you to draw Well, them. maybe that's it, I don't know, surgery or something. There's something going on there that, you know, just sort of struck me as a... As, as a there's a patent difference between her earlier self and her later self. Well, she got all her um, her freckles removed. Well, I didn't know that. See, if she'd, she'd warned me, then I wouldn't have had such a hard time. I remember in, in I remember um, I remember doing a drawing of her in in um, what's that movie um, BMX Bandits or something? Mm. And she was just a freckle faced kid kid. Mm. She's about fifteen or something. I remember in Bop Girl. No, I didn't see that. It's a music video. Yeah, I know. So, why have you yeah. why have you done the traditional pirate <laughs> map? Uh, <laughs> R. Yeah, why have you done that for him? You've never done it for anybody else. I have. I've done it here and there. Oh. I just thought I'd, I'd mix it up a little bit. Oh. Just for the hell of it.
ran out a little bit of room, doesn't matter. This is um, Pablo, this is Pablo, and this is Pablo, and um, this is a crying woman. Pablo Picasso, a very powerful, very powerful battle. Hmm. Uh, well, there's a lot of man. stories here because that's a handkerchief, but it's also, that white part's a handkerchief, but it's also... Full of boogies. No, it's also full of her, her, her tears. Her hands, and her, her tears, yeah. Her, you know? So there's a lot of um, emotion. Yeah. And you can see what the emotion and the passion has done to this form of the face. Hmm. It's sort of, you know, constantly battled and punched. And he doesn't look like Billy Hughes anymore. No. Okay, this is France Cantor and Jim Bridges saying we'll catch you on, on the flip side. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.